Good morning and welcome to Christ United Methodist Church this morning. I'm Reverend Donnie Mitchum. Reverend Jesse Smith and I welcome you this morning to worship. We're glad you're here. We're glad you uh, got the memo. Everybody has their coats and blankets so we can uh, be warm. Miss Joyce, you are looking fabulous. <laughs> Miss Joyce wore her mink today to just show all of us how to be warm in style. So we're glad that you are here. If you're worshiping with us online, I hope that you go ahead and start greeting one another. Toast your joys and your concerns so your church can celebrate and pray with you. If you're here in person, go ahead and if you have a concern that you want to share with us, on your bulletin you can tear that off and place it in the offering plate when it comes around. A few announcements. Sandwich construction is this week and we need your hands so that... Um, we can make 800 sandwiches for our neighbors who currently are unhoused. Also, I want to remind you, next Sunday is the blood drive. Uh, very important. I have seen on the news multiple times the need for blood is critical. So if you can give, go ahead and sign up on Facebook to reserve your slot. That's from 8 to noon. And if you can't get that to work, reach out to Jenny Rudd, jenny at xumc.org, and she can help get you signed up there. And lastly, we have 50 plus next Monday, February 14th, 11 o'clock in the Family Life Center. I think that's all I have. So if you will stand and join me for our call to worship this morning. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is the tree of life to those who take hold of her. Now, if you will remain standing and join us as we sing Prince of Peace.
All right, last time, everything we got, church, you are holy, and you are holy. You are holy, and you are mighty, and you are mighty, and you are worthy, you are worthy, worthy of praise, worthy of praise, and I will follow, and I will follow, and I will live. I love that song. I love it. I love it. You may be seated, and our kids can come forward for children's message. I didn't, I didn't sleep very well last night. So I'm tired. I thought, well, when Pastor Debbie starts preaching, I'll have my perfect chance, right? I could just on my pillow and get some sleep. Oh, you know what? Who knew someone like you? <laughs> Didn't even know that. All that sleeping messed it up. There we go. So, sometimes do you find it hard to go to sleep? Yeah? When you find it hard to go to sleep, what happens? Are you thinking about things? or what do you, What's hard when you can't go to sleep? What makes it hard? You have so much on your mind. Maybe a test, or maybe your friend's mad at you, or maybe um, your mom and dad just took away your electronics, and you can't get those thoughts out of your mind, and you can't sleep. And we need some sleep, don't we? When we don't sleep, oh, Eli, when you don't sleep, are you grumpy? You're not? He doesn't sleep. <laughs> well, listen, when Miss Johnny doesn't sleep, she's grumpy. So one way to stop those thoughts, and we're going to be talking about this all month, is to think about Jesus' peace and to calm your mind, and to rest in the love that Jesus has for you. And so I made you a little sheet to help
help remind you of how you can do that, to have good sleep. And you can put it by your bed. And the first thing it has is a heart there. And it says the first thing you need to do when you're having trouble sleeping or you're feeling worried is breathe. Just breathe. If you can breathe in thinking, you are here, Jesus. And then breathe out thinking, I'm with you. Boy, doesn't that feel good? Just thinking that? If you're, if you're in bed and you can't sleep and you can sit there and curl up. I won't curl up because I'll mess my mic up. I wanted to do that. Yeah. Yeah, curl up and say, just breathe in. You're here, Jesus. And I'm with you. Doesn't that feel, make your heart kind of calm down? Then the next thing you can do is give thanks to God. So you can say, thank you, God, for this bed. Thank you for this place to sleep. Thank you for this pillow to sleep on. Give thanks. Then you can maybe think about, why am I feeling this way? Why can't I sleep? What are those thoughts? And you can talk to God about that. Shailene, you can say, God, that sister of mine made me so mad today. And you can, has that ever happened, Jana? You ever make her mad? Never? She does. There you go. And you can talk to God about those feelings. Then the next thing you can do is capture a moment. You see that little... Um, camera right there. Think about a moment in the day that brought you joy or brought you peace, that made you feel comfort. It might be when you got that note perfect on the piano or when you uh, hit that cartwheel perfect at recess. Any of those things. Think of that positive moment. And the last thing you can do, I love this, is look forward to what's to come. So then when you are there and you can't sleep and you do these things, then God's peace settles over you. And you can look forward to what God is going to do in your life in the next day. So I have a reminder, this whole month, we're going to be talking in church about ways to bring God's peace into our lives. And if you all practice these things, at the end of the month, you all will have something to teach us as adults. So let's pray, God, thank you. Thank you for um, your peace. And um, thank you for the opportunity to practice um, giving our worries and anxieties away to feel your peace. Amen. All right, there's your practice sheet. There you go. Good job. Y'all let me know how this works. How long do you think my arms are? Mercy. I'm an old woman trying to go to bed. Good work. If I lay down the cues, just don't worry. I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm just resting my eyes like my mom used to say. I'll just be resting my eyes. I hope that you all have shared some joys and concerns if you're with us online. I hope you've written some things down here for the offering plate. Let's pray. God of grace and peace, we come this morning offering you our overwhelming gratitude. May our songs and our prayers rise up together to shout our thankfulness to you for your gifts to us. God, as this morning we become still, resting in your peace, remind us that you are always present with us. God, and as we remember that, we start to breathe a little deeper, come to know you a little better. You are the God who sees. Thank you for seeing us. 
Thank you for your care in our daily lives. You know the worries and anxieties, and we confess, God, that these worries and fears and anxieties sometimes overwhelm us. Help us to focus this morning on this moment and to rest in you. We pray, oh God, for those we love who are sick, for those who mourn. We pray for all those impacted by threats of violence this week far away in the Ukraine and those impacted by threats of violence in colleges right down the road. Bring your peace, God, to this world. It seems that this world seem, is mostly chaos, so we ask that you help us to be agents of peace. May your peace settle in our hearts this morning. Help us to share that peace with the world. We ask all these things in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So sometimes that has an effect. It makes you, you want to go to sleep during worship. But <laughs>
And as you make your way back to your seats, I'm going to invite the ushers uh, forward so that we can receive today's tithes and offerings. It felt so good to shake you guys' hands. It's been two years since we've been able to do that, and hopefully soon we'll be able to do it without gloves together. Gracious God, we thank you for an opportunity to give back a portion of what we've been blessed with so that we could see your kingdom of peace and love advance during our lifetime. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
without the mic on, but for the folks at home, uh, we're, we're so glad you're tuning in. We, we did just do the reports for the end of the year. We realized that 30 people are watching online on a regular, consistent basis, so uh, welcome. And if you guys in your living rooms would join us in the serenity prayer as well. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Uh, so this morning, I want to start, and I want to ask you to think about in your mind an image of a time in your life where things were right and in their rightful place, a time where you felt at peace with the world around you. Uh, for me and for Camille, obviously, we have this picture. I used to have it beside uh, my side of the bed on my nightstand, but she's recently taken it and moved it to her side on her nightstand. But it's a picture from about, uh, Camille was seven months pregnant with Isaiah, so that long ago. Uh, we had uh, flown to Alaska. Somebody had gotten us some buddy tickets to be able to travel round trip to Alaska for 60 bucks. Uh, so we had that. Camille was seven months pregnant with Isaiah. We didn't have a dime to spend once we got there. That's how broke we were. Uh, but we had love, and we went and visited this frozen uh, lake in Alaska in April. And there's just this joy and this excitement and this peace on our faces. And I, I think that's why we want to keep it beside the bed, uh, so that when we wake up in the morning, uh, we could just see it and be calm. Maybe uh, images that came to your mind are the same kind of images that you put on your desktop screen uh, at work. We, we want to see something that brings us peace on our work screen. Uh, so maybe for you, that's a scene of nature, right? Some beautiful uh, stars or some nice, big, majestic mountain. Uh, maybe for you, it's, it's a picture of a baby that has uh, new socks on and, and a onesie and just looks so peaceful and calm. Or maybe that image that comes to your mind is the image of, of looking out your window after the first snow. Uh, but for many of us, and I think we have slides of these, that we, we have different images in our mind uh, about what peace looks like. And so we're going to follow uh, the book of Proverbs. We're also going to follow the serenity prayer over the next four weeks. Uh, this four, first week is God grant me the serenity. God grant me peace. God grant me serenity. And that word serenity comes from a Latin word, uh, which means clear skies. No clouds in the sky. And I'm curious this morning, what would it look like for us to have increasing levels of peace in our lives? I believe the reason that it's so important for us to talk about something like this is because so many of us uh, get glimpses of peace. Even in the moment when we feel like things are right and in their rightful place, we, we have this sneaking suspicion in the back of our minds that it won't be like this long that we're waiting for that peace to fade, that we're waiting for real life to come back. And so we have the images of peace on our desktop, but, but they're filled with other clutter of our lives, our work lives, our home lives, our relationships that may have soured, things that have not gone according to plan. And I believe um, that God wants us, if God is the prince of peace. If Jesus says to his followers that my yoke is easy and my burden is light, then I believe that God wants us to have increasing levels of peace, not, not necessarily that the world would be right, but that internally we would have more and more peace in our lives. And I imagine by about this time you're thinking, yeah, how's that possible? See, we understand that uh, clinically, about one out of every five persons is, is clinically diagnosed with anxiety disorder. And anxiety in and of itself is not a bad thing, right? 
I mean, it was what allowed our ancestors to survive. If there was a bear chasing you in the woods, you wanted enough anxiety to where you would run away from the bear or find an escape route, right? Anxiety was what kept us alive. It's a survival instinct. The only problem is when you feel like you're running away from a bear over and over and over again when there's not a real threat. And we live in a culture that feeds us uh, worry and feeds us fear and feeds us anger. And, and if we're not careful, we, we allow those things to become internalized. And it feels like we're running all the time. And Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. You remember the disciples right after Jesus is crucified, uh, they're frightened. They, they're hiding away in the upper room. And they're afraid that Jesus' fate, what has happened to Jesus, will soon happen to them. That the Roman authorities, backed by the religious establishment, will, will crucify them for following Jesus. And, and so they're terrified behind this room. And Jesus appears... And a lot of pictures, images have Jesus' fingers similar to this. And he says, peace, be still. Peace. In the mid he, He's not discounting that people may still want their lives, may still want to crucify them, but Jesus wants them to have an internal locus of peace, of calmness. Of certainty that the God of the universe knows their situation. And so, while we know that um, one out of every five uh, suffer from anxiety disorder, we also know that, that many of us, because of our relationships or because of worry about finances or uh, different things, we, we can have habits of anxiety. And I'm curious, um, what are the habits of the heart and how might we uh, cultivate new habits of the heart which increase our levels of peace? Uh, the book of Proverbs is full of rich, wise sayings. We, we were able to worship in the round during the early service because we worshiped in the Family Life Center uh, where we had heat. And we worshiped in the round, and it was interesting to listen to uh, wise sayings that the people who worship in that service were taught when they were younger. And many of them you guys know that a that, uh, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, or, you know, uh, where, where someone tells you to be your authentic self. Uh, sometimes we try to pass down wisdom to the next generation, things that we've learned along the way. And the book of Proverbs is definitely that. It, it, it's filled with literature, with wisdom sayings. So I want to talk first about one that is less well-known, Proverbs chapter 10, uh, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. It says this, A wise son harvests in the summer. A disgraceful son sleeps right through the harvest. So it's a wise saying. A wise son gets up and he harvests in the summer. A disgraceful son is what? Lazy. And so this was a wise saying to encourage people to help do their part to make sure that life went on. Proverbs 16, uh, 18 this is one that's a little more familiar. You probably know it even if you haven't read Proverbs lately. It says, pride comes before disaster and arrogance before a fall. Probably heard that one, right? I wish Cam Newton would have heard that one. I love Cam. I love Carolina Panther football. But, but a little pride sometimes is a foreshadowing of a fall or a disaster that's about to come. And so sometimes these, these proverbs, these wise sayings, and I would encourage you if you're not in a, in a small group or you don't have a reading plan, maybe just read through the book of Proverbs over the 28 days in February. 
Uh, there's 31 chapters in there. It's a great, great read. But one of the things is uh, it almost seems like the author is writing to a child. Like you just really want your, your children to understand so that they don't make so many detours in life so that they don't get hurt, so that they don't live lives that, that, that hurt people around them. And so in Proverbs uh, chapter 3, starting at verse 21, we get this imagery of a parent saying to a child what it is to increase in peace in their life. So the author says, My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble. You can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster or destruction that comes upon the wicked, for the Lord is your security. He will keep your right foot from being caught in a trap. And if you listen to those words, it sounds like a, someone trying to impart wisdom. And I wonder if uh, we would hear those words today. Because the truth of the matter is we could get older and not necessarily get wiser. We can get older and not necessarily cultivate peace within our life and our relationships. Uh, we can get older and, and not necessarily uh, listen to the words of those who have gone before us to keep us from going astray. And the author says, my, my child, my child, I want to read that first line one more time, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. So if it's common sense and discernment that gives us an opportunity to have more peace in our lives, is it any wonder that we see common sense in such short supply? And what might be the remedy to that? What might help us to keep our eyes on what is most valuable? Wisdom is not given. It's not a given. How can we develop our relationship with God and our relationship with others? One of the ways that the book uh, suggests, and this book was written by, by folks who are living in Chicago. And you could imagine the anxiety that is a daily part of their lives. And so our local brothers and sisters, United Methodist Pastors, collectively got together to write this book, Finding Peace in an Anxious World. Uh, they live in a place that is very anxious, where the murder rate is probably the highest in the United States, where there is tons of inequality and, and, and difficult, difficult problems. How can we find peace even in those situations? And I believe, if, if we're honest, that if we follow this path of the serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. We're going to talk about that next week. What are the things in our lives that we, we just can't change? That keep us up at night, that make us worry, that, that we wish we could change. But honestly, we can't change them. The courage to change the things that we can. What are those things that God is calling us to invest in, to push back against, to remedy in some way? and the wisdom to know the difference. The fourth and final week, uh, Reverend Donnie's going to come and tell us about wisdom. Wisdom is often personified in Proverbs as, as an elderly woman. <laughs> but why? But why? You've got to ask yourself why. Because so many of us in our lives have had strong women figures who have tried and pleaded and, and told us the way to go. And it makes sense. Not everybody, but, but so many women, and particularly 
women with wisdom try to help us find a, a path that leads to life, a path that leads to peace, increasing peace. And so Proverbs is always uh, personifies wisdom as, a, as an aunt figure or mother figure who tries to share wisdom. Two things uh, to practice this upcoming week just to try to increase the peace in your own life. Uh, the first one, Donnie nailed this one in the children's time, it is just breathing exercises, letting ourselves be present where we are, and, and sometimes just uh, using a breath prayer. So one breath prayer might be on your inhale, Lord Jesus Christ. On your exhale, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Throughout your day, as you remember, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Or maybe it's just a one-word breath prayer, love, peace. When you feel that anxiety and that tension, like you're, you, you need to run away from a bear, you feel like you're, you're in a spot where you might lash out at people you care about, what would it look like for you to remember to breathe and to pray? Remember that Christ is present with you in that moment. And then the second thing I want to challenge you with is, is just at the end of the day, uh, this was started by St. Ignatius, uh, which may you know, listen first. At the end of his day, he just told God how his day was when he felt close to God and when he felt distant from God. You could do this on the back porch or in a screened-in porch, or you could take a walk in your afternoon after your work day, whatever it is. What would it look like for you just to tell God how your day went and to be in tune with times where you felt close and times where you felt distant? What is increasing my peace? What is increasing my relationship with God? One of the ways that we do that is is by celebrating the sacrament of communion, where we're reminded that Christ is present with us and that uh, Christ has given us a purpose and a mission to be the body of Christ, to represent Christ in the places where we live. Uh, what would it look like for us to pass that peace along? Um, we're going to go through the communion liturgy. Donnie, if you want to come up and... And then we'll celebrate communion together. Uh, the words will be on the screens and also in the hymnal if you... Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. With your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and glory and praise your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty all those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when, when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always 
in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, his father, and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in, the, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So now as the ushers direct you, uh, starting with the front and, and the band, if the band will come forward, and then we will receive communion. And if you would like, the altar is open during this last song.
invite you to close your eyes while we sing this chorus over you one last time. For us to be really intentional, to really lay back on Jesus and breathe and hear these words that we can rest in Jesus, and we find peace in Jesus. So if everybody would close their eyes and we'll sing this. always say this to the kids, but this time I thought we all needed to hear that. Um, my friends, this, this is how much Jesus loves you. I hope that fills you with peace and that you live into that this week. Amen. I want to sit at your feet, drink from 